So Wall Street is waiting for some big announcements this week. We've got the Fed's monetary policy statement coming out on Wednesday. Uh, we've got the first look at Q2 GDP coming out on Thursday, and then we have inflation numbers coming out on Friday. And while we are waiting for all those numbers, we had consumer confidence today and some earnings announcements that sent Wall Street down just a little bit as they are waiting for the big numbers that are coming out later this week. Let's take a look at what happened in the S&P 500 today. You can see that the index dropped back from this downtrending resistance level that it has been interacting with for quite some time. You can see it was support here, then resistance, resistance. It's now serving as resistance again. And you can see that we are starting to drop back down a little bit, heading down toward our line in the sand for a bear market. And I wouldn't be surprised to see us continuing to drift back down toward this level as we wait for the FOMC announcement tomorrow. Now, I mentioned that we had some earnings announcements and some uh, economic data that came out today. Let's take a look first at the economic announcement. This was the conference board consumer confidence number that came out and you can see it was a swing and a miss. Uh, expectations were for 97.3. It came in at 95.7. Last month it was 98.4. So we're dropping. We're seeing consumers that are struggling to remain confident in the face of high inflationary pressure that we are seeing. We've also talked about how there is a chance that some of that inflationary pressure could be coming down a bit, but certainly announcements like we got yesterday from Walmart uh, aren't helping where they say consumers are having to divert so much of their spending to gasoline and food costs that they don't have as much left over for other things that they would typically be purchasing at a Walmart or a Sam's Club. And so Walmart is going to have to cut prices on those items to try and get them out the door. So we have gotten some mixed uh, data over the past couple of weeks where we'll get these confidence numbers that come in and they're not great, but then we'll continue to see strong spending numbers. And we have seen that uh, playing out over the past little bit. And so everybody's wondering what's going to be happening here the rest of this week. And tomorrow we have another opportunity for the spending numbers to actually disagree with the consumer confidence numbers with the durable goods orders number that is going to be coming out tomorrow. Durable goods are uh, spending on any object that has an anticipated lifetime that is greater than three years. And so we had bad consumer confidence numbers, but if we get beats here on the durable goods numbers, that could tell us that even though consumers say they're nervous and they're worried about inflation, they're worried about the state of the economy, they're still out there spending. And we did actually see that a little bit in some of the earnings announcements that came out today. Those two were a mixed bag. So uh, this morning we had uh, earnings announcements from UPS, uh, from McDonald's, from Coca-Cola. Those are the three I want to look at right now. And uh, UPS beat earnings numbers and they said that they're going to be buying back shares, but they didn't raise their full year guidance. We saw some companies that have raised guidance for this year and uh, UPS didn't do that. And traders are still nervous about the state of uh, the economy and whether consumers are going to be spending or not. And you can see right down here that UPS dropped. It had a big down day today. However, McDonald's and Coca-Cola also reported earnings. Here's McDonald's in the middle, and here's Coca-Cola right at the top right, and they both had great days today. They were some of the brightest points in the S&P 500 today while UPS was down. One of the things that McDonald's and Coca-Cola both said is they were able to pass on the price increases that they were experiencing in producing their goods onto consumers, and the consumers were still paying for those things. And so, it kind of goes along with what Walmart said that uh, food and fuel prices are rising and consumers are spending more on those items, but it's leaving less for discretionary spending. So if you think about UPS and the things that you are getting delivered to you by UPS, those are probably more toward the discretionary spending end of the spectrum and not necessarily the uh, defensive end of the spectrum of the things that you have to buy as consumer staples. And so we're seeing that divide getting a little bit wider uh, with the price action that we saw in the market today. And so, um, and uh, sorry, coming back to the heat map, you can see a lot of these big market cap stocks, uh, traders were getting nervous. And so we saw them pulling back. 
Now, after hours, we had some interesting announcements that came out. We had Microsoft come out with its earnings. And after it dropped today in the run up to its earnings announcement, you can see that it is trading just a little bit higher here at 252 after hours after it has reported earnings. Now, uh, Microsoft confirmed that the company took a wallop uh, due to slowness in the Chinese economy thanks to the COVID lockdown. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Microsoft start to bounce back a little bit tomorrow as uh, the rest of the market comes back to life uh, after the opening bell. After hours trading can sometimes be a little bit misleading. Now, Microsoft did miss its earnings estimates, but that's looking backward. And everybody on Wall Street is always trying to look forward. And if the reasons why they missed estimates uh, in the past quarter no longer exist, then it's easier to start looking forward and think that the company has a better opportunity to rebound. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if some of this bullishness that we are seeing, again, even though the company missed expectations, it's up a little bit in after hours trading. And if we can get some more positive momentum, uh, potentially coming from uh, the Fed tomorrow, or uh, if those uh, durable goods numbers come in a little bit better than expected, to see Microsoft uh, coming up just a little bit. And the same thing uh, is happening with Alphabet. If you look at Alphabet, they missed earnings expectations as well. And they saw a dip down into the earnings announcement and after hours, Alphabet is trading up at 108. So two companies, big tech companies that uh, missed earnings estimates are up in after hours trading because it looks like Wall Street is starting to look at Q2 and say, all right, uh, we were going through especially hard times there. We think things are starting to look a little bit better. And if that turnaround can grab a little bit of momentum, and again, coming back to the S&P 500, we know that this is a market cap weighted stock index, meaning the companies that have the bigger market cap i.e. the ones that have the bigger squares here on this heat map, and these are two of the biggest, and they reported today and are up after hours. If those stocks can move a little bit higher tomorrow, that could keep the S&P 500 out of bear market territory, at least until we get to the FOMC announcement tomorrow afternoon and see what the Fed has to say about its inflationary expectations, how high it's going to be raising rates. We know that we are seeing traders waffling back and forth on where they think the Fed is going to be raising interest rates. If we come and take a look at where expectations are, let's take a look at this, just for tomorrow's announcement, we are seeing a very strong probability being priced into the market that uh, the Fed is going to only raise by 75 basis points. There are still some that think there's a chance that the Fed could raise a full percentage point, but most are leaning away from that right now and thinking that the Fed is only going to have to raise by 75 basis points. But if we get out to December, we had been seeing expectations building for a while that uh, we may actually be up around 3.75% by the end of um, uh, sorry, end of December. So, but we are seeing a 50% chance or greater than 50% chance being priced in that we're only going to see rates rising up to three and a half percent. And that's been fluctuating a little bit. Uh, it was down at three and a half percent for a while. Then we got the higher inflation numbers. It started to creep back up to maybe expectations of 3.75 by the end of the year. And now we're drifting back down toward 3.5. And we're seeing the same thing as we look out toward uh, halfway through 2023. For a while, it was drifting back up to rates being still up around 3.5% by the middle of 2023. And right now, we're seeing a greater percent chance being priced in that rates are only going to be at about 3.25%, a greater than 50% chance if we add all these together that they'll be uh, down below those levels. So we are starting to see expectations for just how aggressive the Fed is going to have to be with interest rates coming down just a little bit. And we're going to have an opportunity for that to be confirmed tomorrow. 
But uh, as we are watching all of that happening, it's having an impact on where the market is going. Uh, so we do still see a lot of weakness being priced in for economic expectations to that 10-year treasury yield. Uh, it has dropped back down to 2.786%. And if you look at this uh, pattern that is taking shape, it's looking oddly suspicious like a head and shoulders pattern. Head here, left shoulder, right shoulder. We are right at the neckline and we are getting a deeper and deeper inversion between the two-year yield, which is still up above 3% at 3.059, and the 10-year, which is uh, here at 2.786. There's still a slight inversion between the two-year and the 30-year, which is just barely above 3%, but the 10-year is really taking the brunt of this and getting pushed down lower. And we could see a completion of this head and shoulders pattern and uh, maybe even see the 10 year yield dropping back down to 2.5% depending on what the Fed does uh, with its monetary policy statement, depending on what the uh, GDP numbers look like on Thursday, depending on what uh, the PCE price index or personal consumption expenditures price index looks like on Friday. So we are right at the baseline or the neckline of that potential head and shoulders pattern on the 10 year treasury and we could see yields drop. Now if yields drop, that could be stimulative for the US economy. It's going to bring rates down, the 30 year mortgage would probably drop even farther uh, from its recent highs. We could see uh, auto loan uh, rates dropping, business loan rates dropping. If those yields start moving lower and lower, that could be a little shot in the arm for economic expectations moving forward. So we're gonna to have to keep an eye on that. Uh, but in the meantime, as we look at the other risk indicators that are out there in the market, we've seen them tick up just a little bit, but not too much. If you look at the VIX, uh, it is here just challenging resistance at the same price or same range that it had found support previously. It hit resistance at that same level back here. 25 has been a pretty good level for us to watch uh, in the VIX over the past couple of months to see are we at an elevated level of uh, volatility compared to where we have been recently or are we at the lower end of the range? So we dipped back down here into the lower end of the range here momentarily. We're up there retesting, but we could drop back down lower. Uh, now, one area that we had seen a bit of a bump in, in the willingness to take on some additional risk in portfolios was Bitcoin. And I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. It did break up and above this level. It's dropped back down the price level that had served as resistance and was recently broken through. So uh, if it can hold and find some support a little bit higher than this previous support level and start to turn around, that will confirm that we're starting to see a change here as well in uh, watching traders take on some additional risk in uh, their portfolios. Now, I had a request to take a look at what's happening in Chinese stocks as well, because we're seeing something very similar to what we were seeing here on Bitcoin with Chinese stocks. So uh, these are the two funds that I like to uh, track as I watch Chinese stocks. Uh, this is the X-Trackers Harvest CSI 300 index. And I think of this as the Chinese S&P 500. It's large cap stocks. And it rose up to resistance right here at 34, pulled back and is starting to find some support at the same level where it hit resistance in early June. So if we can see this bounce back up higher, just like we were looking for Bitcoin to find a little higher high and start bouncing back up higher, uh, it's got an opportunity to see these large cap stocks bouncing back up a little bit. They've certainly recovered off of their lows. And if that support level can hold, uh, it will be one step closer to confirming that we are seeing a reversal of this big bearish downward movement. I've got to zoom all the way back here to really get to the top of where the bearish movement started in Chinese stocks. That was at the beginning of 2021. So uh, we could be seeing a nice inverted head and shoulders pattern taking shape here if support can hold. So that's large cap stocks here in China. If you wanna take a look at small cap stocks, we're seeing something very similar. Uh, if we were to take a level right down through here, 
and look at what's happening here. If it can continue moving up and break up through this downtrending resistance level, we're starting to see a rebound in Chinese small cap stocks. So investors around the world are starting to show a little bit more of a risk appetite in their investments. And if we come back and take a look at US small cap stocks in the Russell 2000, we're seeing something very similar. We've come up and hit some resistance at the same level that we had hit resistance previously. It was support here for a while, now it's resistance. We're dropping back down, but if the Russell can move back up and break up and through here, we will have had a nice series of higher lows. We are seeing breaks through these resistance levels. We are poised to be able to see the market recover. And that all comes back to the S&P 500 as well, where we are poised to see if the S&P 500 can stay above this bear market territory line and then move higher, to see it break up and through this downtrending resistance level and maybe make a run up toward these higher levels that the S&P 500 had seen in late May, early June before we got that first devastating CPI number that uh, sent everybody uh, looking for profit taking and, and reducing risk in their portfolios. So we're continuing to see the market taking some baby steps and wanting to take on a little bit more risk um, and uh, seeing if it's justified. So far, we are seeing some decent earnings announcements coming out from big companies. We've got these big economic announcements that are coming out uh, tomorrow for uh, earnings. As we look at this, we're going to get another big one after the market closes with Meta Platforms. So uh, we have seen these companies taking a bit of a hit after we got the Snap earnings last week and it's been dropping right down into earnings. But just like we saw with Microsoft and like we saw with Alphabet in After Hours, the drop into the earnings announcement uh, shows that maybe traders were just a little bit too pessimistic and uh, we could see with just even decent numbers, remember Alphabet and Microsoft both missed their earnings estimates. Um, we could see um, meta platforms do the same thing. Now, if meta platforms bounces a little bit after hours tomorrow, uh, because they have a good earnings announcement, they still have a long way to go to try and recover from where they were to where they currently are. But any little uh, little bit of bullishness that we can see here in the market could go a long way toward lifting the S&P 500 back up into more of a stable range. We don't even have to have uh, the S&P 500 uh, climbing back up toward all-time highs, but we can start to see the market uh, recovering a little bit and uh, starting to stabilize. So uh, we're seeing positive things happening there. I want to take a quick peek at the put call ratio just to show that after dropping down to nice lower lows, we haven't risen back up to these higher highs. Uh, we are slightly up above one, but even today when the mark, the S&P 500 was pulling back just a little bit, we're pretty even in the number of calls being purchased compared to the number of puts being purchased. And so if we can get this overall trend moving back down this way instead of the upward trending channel that it has been in, that will confirm to us that traders are becoming a little bit more uh, confident in where the S&P 500 could be going in the future. So we are seeing a number of uh, positive uh, items here and um, wanted to uh, hit one other uh, question here that I got uh, from Greg. He said, uh, as he was looking at, let's come back to that chart. So he wanted to uh, take a look at Boston Beer Company, ticker symbol is SAM. And uh, you can see that we are starting to see a turnaround here as well. So when we think about Coke versus like Boston Beer, we, we tend to see a little more price stability in Coca-Cola. That's one of the reasons why uh, as we look at this heat map, you see Coca-Cola is right up here in consumer defensive. That is the a segment that it is in because it has proven to be a defensive brand name that uh, even if people are pulling back a little bit on some of their other discretionary spending, uh, if they want to treat themselves, they're still going to get themselves their Diet Coke uh, each day or whatever their beverage of choice is among Coca-Cola's wide array of uh, potential drinks out there. And so 
Uh, but we're starting to see uh, companies like Boston Beer Company also rebounding here. And so after earnings here, it uh, was pretty volatile, but then continued to bounce back up higher, breaking above some of these downtrending resistance levels that had been established. So you've got a nice break here on Boston Beer Company. And uh, Greg was asking about that in relationship to the Constellation Brands. And Constellation Brands has had a little more stability and uh, pricing power. Uh, it has a much broader uh, portfolio of adult beverages compared to Boston Beer Company. Boston Beer Company has been expanding its portfolio, but Constellation Brands is much more uh, comprehensive. And so we have seen it holding on to some of its gains a little bit better. Uh, but uh, here, its latest earnings announcement sent it dropping. It's been able to recover uh, with the uh, other earnings announcements that we have seen and some of the uh, positive expectations that continue to come out on Wall Street, but uh, we are uh, still seeing a little bit of a shift as traders are moving back into the idea that maybe things have come down far enough, maybe consumers are going to get a little more comfortable with purchasing, especially if we see inflationary pressure drop down just a little bit, which is going to be Friday's big data point, uh, then uh, we could see some great things uh, happening there. Uh, I had another question. I wanted to hit um, uh, from Vincent asking why uh, have um, th has there been such uh, a sharp decline in long-term storage REITs? So as we pull this back, you know, the big decline that was coming here uh, was uh, driven primarily by interest rate shocks and interest rate expectations. Now you can see that we are seeing a bit of a rebound here. And what uh, be interesting on this one, let's compare this. To the TNX. <clears throat> and so you can see as the TNX was rising for a while, we were seeing public storage moving up with it. And then suddenly we saw this break higher and that broke the back of a lot of these stocks that had been doing really well when uh, interest rates were low, traders really didn't have anywhere else to go to get good yield, and so a lot of them were turning to REITs like public storage. Uh, but as soon as we really broke up and through this threshold, and uh, you, know, you can't see it on here, it's not listed, but this is about 2.7% uh, on the TNX. and. Uh, so we broke up above there, came back down. It started to drop a little bit here. We started to see PSA come up a little bit. We saw this shoot up. PSA went down a little bit. We saw it come back down. PSA started to recover. We saw this go back up. PSA dipped back down. Now that we're coming back down and maybe going to complete a head and shoulders pattern on PSA, suddenly here come, uh, sorry, on the TNX, suddenly here comes uh, PSA. So uh, any of these companies out there that have been attractive in the past because of their strong dividend yields, they have been uh, impacted dramatically by where the TNX has been going. Because if traders could get above 3% on the TNX at no risk, they didn't feel like they, it was worth paying as much of a risk premium for the dividend yields that were available on a stock like PSA. So uh, that trend is likely going to continue for us here uh, for the foreseeable future. That any stock that is heavily uh, reliant on the attractiveness of its dividend yield compared to the 10-year treasury yield is going to be fluctuating back and forth with that 10-year treasury yield. So now we've got a lot of uh, great uh, things that are happening here in the market. Again, coming back to the S&P 500, uh, we are on the cusp of potentially coming back up to challenge this downtrending resistance level. We jumped up right to that level after completing this bullish continuation pattern in mid-May, hit resistance, we've come back down, and as so often happens during periods of recovery, you go up and hit some resistance, you drop back down, regain some momentum, and then try again. And if we can get uh, positive news coming out of the Fed tomorrow, and if we can get uh, good GDP news and good inflation news, so GDP on Thursday, inflation news on Friday, we've got an opportunity 
coupled with all the earnings announcements that are coming out to see the S&P 500 challenge that uh, uptrending, sorry, that downtrending resistance level. So uh, we'll see what happens. We'll keep you posted here on our market update videos. Uh, thanks for joining me. And we'll see you next time.